I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for the opportunity to bring God's word to you today. And today is Friday. Praise God. Now, I tell you this every Friday. Take the weekend to listen to these messages again and again from Monday. You need it. So your mind will be framed with the clear understanding of what the mind of God is concerning the things that we have shared. You may have listened to it before, but take this weekend to listen again. You can never have enough of God's word. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now our team scripture, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. Now, these were the disciples praying to God after they have been threatened not to preach in the name of Jesus again. And now, Lord, verse 29, behold their threatenings. Now, I told you earlier on that many things threaten you in life, not just um, people, not just physical people persecuting you. You know, the concept of persecution is not just what you receive from people. The moment you take your stand as one who believes in Jesus, do you know life itself can begin to persecute you? What do I mean persecute? It is questioning. It's, it's, when, when you hear that Christians are persecuted for their faith, what do you think is going on? It is people who are putting them under pressure to prove to them that this thing they claim is false, is wrong. So if you claim your Jesus is powerful, let him come and save you from my hands. See that now? Now that's where you see believers put on that. Up. That's why, you know, I was telling you, uh, I think at the beginning of the week, I was telling you that this whole concept of, you know, because it has become a belief and that's why I, I need to, or we need to deal with it. The whole concept of if they slaughter your neck for Jesus, glorify him in it. At least you died praising him. Something is wrong with that. Because why would they slaughter your head for Jesus? They are trying to tell you that you are not who you think you are. Be, when you believe in Jesus, the whole thing of believing in Jesus makes you feel special, okay? And now, with that boldness, you are sharing God's word, you are preaching, you are, you are going around telling people, Jesus can save you, and, 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 and everybody's like, I mean, why are you thinking you're special? Because you are. Now, someone wakes up and say, I don't like these people. Why don't you like? They, they feel they are special people. Do we feel we are special? Or do we know that we are special? Okay. And then they said, let's begin to arrest them. So that they will shut their mouth. Let's arrest them. Let's punish them. So that they will shut their mouth. And then they get you. And then they succeed in killing you. The, the, the whole essence of the persecution is to prove to you or try to prove to you that you are not what you claim you are. But then, do we claim we are what we are not? Now, you see why it's important I, I, I bring this thing. I began to talk about this earlier uh, in the week. And I told you how it is wrong. I, I, I don't believe it is right for a child of God to be killed because he believes in Jesus. Now, when I say it is right, I'm not saying uh, morally, the people who are doing it. I'm saying you who have believed in Jesus, why would you allow yourself to die? Yes. Now, you may think, oh, what do we, do we can, what, what could we have done? We have examples in scriptures. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I share that example with you. 
They refused to die. Now you know it was God's mercy. No! It was their choice. They understood. Now, now, see, we, we don't just take this thing for face value. If we are following the boldness that God wants us to have, what is the essence of that boldness if there is no power backing it up? Do you think God wants us to die? Do you think God's, oh, God looks, you know, you know the mental, how, how did we even get there? And so, don't you just see Stephen? Jesus had to stand up to receive Stephen. Come on, that's not comradeship. It makes nonsense of the whole reason Jesus came. So why did Jesus stand up to receive him? No, Stephen said, I see the Lord standing. No, 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 no. He wasn't standing to receive him. I believe Jesus was standing. You know how you get to that point? Stephen! Do something, praise God. I believe so. And only for Stephen to say, into your hands I commend my spirit. Now understand this. The law of the spirit works this way. By your words, you are condemned. By your words, you are justified. That's how the law of the spirit works. It's what you say. No matter how, how what you believe, at the moment of trial, what you say is what you get. This is the truth. So when those guys said, if it is fullness, born in fullness, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from that fullness and he will deliver us from your hands. That was a clear statement. There was no iota of doubt. There was no second guessing about, about it our God who we serve. Now remember, I told you, now they said our God who we serve, not who we plan to serve, who we are, no, no, our God who we already are in service to. Remember, they did not bow because they were already serving God. So I'm not talking about one who's compromising his faith and then now there's a challenge. He say, it's better I die in Jesus rather than dying in in so I will stand for Jesus the Jesus you're standing for he's able to deliver you so why don't you call on his deliverance at that moment not out of fear see that's why you can't be living a fake life if you're for Jesus stand for him I mean what came on Elijah to gather the old prophets of Baal to the Mount Carmel I said, today, we will decide if God is God, let us serve him. If Baal is Baal, let us serve him. I said, let's do this. You call down fire. Now, do you think if the prophets of Baal, now, you, they were not placed on that direct. If you want to ask who had the advantage in that thing, they had the advantage. You see, because they had the queen to their side. Now, the king would do whatever the queen wants. Okay? So they have the queen to their side. All they would have told Elijah is, wait until Jezebel comes, then we'll decide. And then when Jezebel comes, they'll say, see that guy, he's threatening us, please take him up. Now, for them to agree to that challenge, don't you think they must have seen some demonstrations of Baal before? They were not foolish people. No fake man will accept that kind of challenge. That will bring national disgrace to them. No. So they must have seen some measure of the power of Baal. And that's what they have been using to deceive people until that challenge. Because just like in, in, in today's world, you know, somebody say, ah, ah, pastor, hey, if I see, if you see what I saw, what the Baba in my village did, someone will be telling you, ah, hmm, ah, the things I have seen, eh, forget it too. Now, now, truly, there are things that you, you, you must have experienced that are unexplainable. They are unexplainable. See, the power of Satan can exist until a child of God stands up 
for who he is, he can put a stop to that. And sometimes I say, ah, I don't believe in all those things. So, ah, they don't exist. Now, now, when you say they don't exist, I say they don't exist by faith. Or, you know, when someone tells you, look, you know, sometimes I, say, I saw something moving. And you look at that, are you sure you saw anything? Yeah, I, I saw it. I, please stop it. You didn't see anything. Maybe it's your mind that is hallucinating. No, there are things. It's <laughs> God. There are things. But you see, whatever, that, that's why people put their trust in those things. But you see, the power of God overrides every other power that exists. That's why Jesus said to us, I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. So Jesus recognized that there are powers by which the enemy operates. But then he says to us, I give you authority. Now, what's the difference between authority and power? Okay, yeah. A power, a power is like dynamo, okay? Dynamite. So it's something that can explode is something then then authority comes from the place of power also but then here is how authority functions when you function in authority it means you are subject to a greater power yes so jesus didn't say i'm giving you the power of god to go and trample upon serpents and scorpion he said i give you authority now how do we use that authority so sometimes you know you see believers want to go and challenge the gods in your village I want to challenge them to a showdown. I will show you that my, my God is more powerful. Not necessarily. If they want to display their stuff, you under authority, you can say, I command everything that I've ever worked for you to cease working from today. And that's enough. Yes, that's enough. You don't necessarily have to go there and say, do your own. I'll do my own. And then they come and then they start, you know, like um, um, Moses and Herod went to Pharaoh's palace and they dropped their rod. Now, Moses didn't go there to challenge them, okay? He just went there, look, let my people go, Pharaoh. God sent me and said, who's that God? Okay, you want to see God's power? Let me show you what, what I'm talking about. To let you know that I'm not here by myself. I'm backed up by a divine authority, okay? So he dropped his rod. And then Pharaoh said, we know this thing. And I called, and that is real. So somebody will say, why didn't God stop their rod from turning into serpents? Hey, Moses had the authority to stop it, but he didn't. Maybe he didn't know that he could have stopped it. But then we know how the story ended. The rod of Moses swallowed up their own serpents. You know that, right? Praise God. So, so, we don't go into all those display of power. We carry an authority that can put an end to whatever power anyone wants to display. Brothers and sisters, we carry something. It's not fake. We are not trying to make ourselves feel good, lying to ourselves that we have something. No, brothers and sisters, we who believe in Jesus, we carry something. Oh no, we do. We do. We do. What we carry can keep you safe. What we carry can bring health to your body. What we carry can give you money. I come on about You've not learned how to trust in it. That's the problem with a lot of believers. You don't know how to trust in the power of God. That's what I'm talking to you about boldness. It requires boldness to walk in this thing. It's not, I believe Jesus. Then somewhere in your heart, you're saying, hmm, let me not say it out loud, just in case it doesn't work. You may not say it out with your mouth, but you're saying it in your heart. Just in case it doesn't work. So let me just keep quiet and watch. Come on, brothers and sisters. If you believe in Jesus, then believe in Jesus. And the Jesus that you believe in, he has enough power to save you. The Bible says he's able to save you to the uttermost. What do you understand? Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't die. 
you find yourself in that situation and, 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 and the thought of you perishing comes to your mind. What did Jesus say? That whosoever believes in him should, is a strong word, should not perish. But instead of perishing, have eternal life. Is it not amazing that the people of the Old Testament demonstrated eternal life more than the people of the New Testament that demonstrated? I, I mean, how else do you want to give an example? Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Okay? Now, Nebuchadnezzar got these boys and said, Look, if you don't bow to my God, I'll throw you into that fire. They said, Look, King, don't, be, don't worry about it. Our God will deliver us. Now, he said, okay, look, I'm going to show to you guys that I, I mean what I'm talking about. He carried them and threw them into the fire. Did they perish? No, the Bible said not even their clothes had the smell of smoke. He threw them inside. Not only did God save them from the fire, the king looked into that fire and he saw a fourth man in there. And guess what he said? The fourth man is like unto the Son of God. What do you understand from that? Not just that they did not perish. You could see that eternal life was made manifest in that furnace. Eternal life was made manifest there. The king saw it and he confessed. I see a fourth man in there. Praise God. We are never alone. Now, imagine if the king had only said, ah, how come they are not burning? The guys are walking around freely. That would have looked so great. But guess what? God proved that day. And you know, that's why I tell people, I tell believers, I say, forget all this nonsense. People talk about Old Testament, New Testament. God is the same God all true. He's the same God all true. They say, you'll be deceiving yourself to be, ah, no, on that New Testament is a, is a measure of grace. Is there any grace? You know, I was talking to her one time. I said, is there any grace you function in the New Testament and someone did not function in the Old Testament? Mention one. Oh, the forgiveness of sins. Ah, huh? I will show you people who enjoyed forgiveness of sins. Even in the Old Testament. So people don't know what they talk about. You know, Jesus came after if he's, you know how, how sometimes they say, ah, if he was in the Old Testament, the God was just giving you, no, oh, there are people who did things in the Old Testament and God just looked at them and shook his head. The death of Jesus did not change God. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It did not change God. Rather, it was only trying to build a mindset in you of what already exists in God. So right from time, there were people who understood God. So even in the New Testament, if you don't understand God, you will still suffer like one who Jesus did not die for. The whole message of the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus is to create a consciousness in us. It didn't change God one day. Let's aim for more, brothers and sisters. That's what we're talking about. Let's aim for more. There is more in God. There is, there is more. And that more comes with boldness. In our exercise of boldness. See, everything in life is challenging your faith. When you look at the bank account and there is no money, then guess what it's doing? I thought you said you have God who blesses you. It's challenging your faith. When you have a health challenge, what's, what's going on? That health is, that sickness is challenging your faith. When things don't look like they are working, it is challenging your faith. What do you do? Look at what they did. Look at what they did. He said, and now, O oh Lord, behold their threatening. Ah, it may not be a human being that is threatening you. It might be a disease that is threatening you. And the doctor have told you, oh, you have just two weeks to leave. It's a threat. That sickness is telling you, I'm going to kill you. The same way men told these guys of old, we will kill you if you continue preaching this Jesus. The same way that sickness is telling you, I'll kill you if you, if you keep saying that, then you will not die. Behold, they are threatening, and grant unto thy servants 
that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Now, now here you are. You, you have this health situation and you're already thinking, maybe I'm going to die one day. Hey, 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 stop thinking that way. Father, grant unto your servants that with all boldness I will stand and give your testimony all the days of my life. How I got healed of this disease, how I got healed of this sickness with all boldness, Lord. I commend them, Brenda Zikatebenia. There is no way you pray like that with all your heart that the Holy Ghost will not feed you. That's what He loves. You don't have money now. People may be laughing at you now. Uh, 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 don't cry. Don't cry. Go as a father. Grant unto thy servant that with all boldness I will stand with every blessing you have blessed me with to preach your word. Now you may be talking. Oh, look, God is good. They will laugh at you. Relax. This is what you need. Acts 4, 29. This is what you need. Grant unto your servant, Lord, that with all boldness, calibre, that's why we cannot be quiet. We can't keep quiet. We can't succumb to persecution. And I said, it's only human beings that persecute. Life itself is trying to persecute you. Rise against it. Win. Be victorious. And speak God's testimony. Praise God. Father, I release your grace. And grace that supplies boldness. Let it be released upon me right now. Arise. Do the bidding of the kingdom of heaven. And win. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have the most fantastic weekend of your life. Praise God. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.